Today we're going to make a weed whacker out of a golf club. All right, here's what we're working with. I got this golf club for a dollar at a garage sale, and this 10 inch circular saw blade came on my table saw and is pretty worn out. I clamped the blade down to a sawhorse and used a silver sharpie to mark the lines I wanted to cut. I used my angle grinder to cut off the teeth and cut along these lines. Cutting straight lines is quite easy, but with the curved lines, you have to be a little bit more careful. You don't want the blade to pinch, so I make sure not to push too hard and instead just make a lot of shallow passes. It's hard to get into some of the real tight corners, so I just use pliers to break away the last piece. After using a cutting wheel to make the cuts, I switched to a 40 grit flap disc and I used this to bevel the edges and make them sharp. I flipped the blade over and then ground from the other side. The blade is less than an eighth of an inch thick, so beveling it didn't take too long. I am by no means a knife maker, and this is a pretty aggressive flap disc, but it isn't hard to get this about as sharp as an axe. Originally, I was going to leave most of the blade round, but then I realized that part wouldn't be that effective, and I thought it might be a good idea to cut down onto weight. So I cut it into the shape of a double-sided axe, and then used the flap disc to round over the non-cutting edges. The bottom of the driver head is all curved and I want a flat surface to mount the blade to. The head of the driver is made out of some really hard metal alloy, but I wasn't really sure what was inside. Also the angle of the shaft and the head made it a little bit tricky to clamp down, so I had to adjust it a few times before cutting all the way through. Definitely smelt like burnt rubber inside, and lo and behold, the inside was filled with foam. I traced the outline of the driver onto the blade, and then drilled holes so I could bolt it to the driver head. The metal on the driver head was quite hard, and I actually broke off a couple drill bits before drilling all the way through. I put a couple of bolts through, and screwed on some nuts and it looks like an elephant. But before I show you how I tested this weed whacker, let me tell you about the sponsor for this video, Amazon's Father's Day gift guide. Father's Day is fast approaching and Amazon makes it easy for us all by curating an excellent list of Father's Day gifts. They sent me a few of these to test out and here are some of my favorites. First up is the Skill Self-Leveling Green Cross Line Laser with projected measuring marks. It projects up to 65 feet and has projected measuring marks that help you set equal distances. It has superior visibility and most importantly, it's self-leveling. I can just put it on my tripod and as long as I get it close to level, it will finish leveling itself by itself. The batteries are integrated into the device, so all you need to do is just plug it in to charge it. This is handy for little projects like hanging a mirror or photos, or big projects like tiling a bathroom. Next up is the iRobot Roomba i7. It's a robot vacuum that has an automatic dirt disposal built into the dock. It empties on its own so you don't have to think about vacuuming for weeks at a time. This is a great product for pet owners. Its high efficiency filter traps 99% of cat and dog allergens. There are also some old school items like this Waterman Kareen Amber Shimmer Fountain Pen. This thing is super fancy with pure fluid curves that conjure the sleek lines and billowing sails of a luxury yacht. But maybe your dad's not that fancy and is more of a beer and burgers kind of guy. Well, check out this Weber Performer Charcoal Grill. It's 22 inches in diameter and it holds up to 13 burgers. I like that it's easy to move, has a whole bunch of built-in hooks, and this really convenient counter that folds up and locks into place. This is just a few of the items in the Father's Day gifts guide, so click on the link in the description box below to check them all out. All right, back to the build. All right, test number one. Now, I am not a golfer, so I was a little bit careful at first, but I definitely wanted to take advantage of the double-sidedness of the blade. I then tried it out on a pineapple. I was really impressed with how cleanly it cut, particularly on the bottom side. At this point I realized with the weight on the head, I really didn't need to swing that hard. So we had a lot of rain out here in the desert this spring, which resulted in some really high dry weeds. And it only took me about two minutes to clear this patch of fire hazard. I 
first I was thinking of this project as kind of a gimmick and just wanted to see if it would sort of work, but it works surprisingly well, so I decided to make it a little bit nicer so that I would keep it. So I sprayed the blade with a coat of rusty metal primer before painting it with a gloss protective enamel. I painted the golf club with Rust-Oleum 2X, which is great for plastics and synthetic materials. And even though the blade was plenty sharp for weeds with just the angle grinder, I decided to elevate it a bit and brought out the belt sander to give it a more refined edge. This was a really fun project, it worked surprisingly well, and it only took about an hour and a half to two hours of build time. But what's really interesting to me is how this represents opportunities for upcycling. The materials for even this old circular saw blade and crappy golf club are incredibly advanced. This entire device weighs less than two pounds and is quite strong. For me to make something like this out of new materials would be incredibly expensive. If you want to see more testing of this DIY Weed Whacker, be sure to follow me on Instagram. Check out some of our other videos and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks. Bye.